Welcome back. While in the first of its kind, the official opposition party wants ministers who fail to respond to questions in parliament on time to be reprimanded. The Rules Committee has said yes to this tentatively, but is still checking the law whether it allows for that. So to complete the process, the new rules will now have to be taken to the House for final approval, a House filled with ANC members. So let's discuss this now with DA Chief Whip uh, Natasha Mazzoni. Natasha, always a pleasure speaking to you. First of all, paint us a picture of what it's like in parliament. Who are the serial offenders? Who are the ones that just refuse to answer questions? And what is the status quo like for MPs? So, Faith, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to ask, especially in the time of COVID, because, I mean, for example, tonight you can't see me live. You just see a, a picture of me, and that's because of a, a bad network cover. So what we've had is we've had um, ministers, it's ministers that answer questions. Mm. So members of parliament have a certain quota of questions that they're allowed to put in. It's part of our oversight mechanism. And the ministers then have a duty and an obligation to answer those questions. And we have clusters. So we have the economics cluster, the safety and security cluster, the finance cluster. And uh, every week then we have a different cluster answering questions. And we have serial offenders that uh, don't answer questions and don't... Uh, um, you know, simply decide that, um, you know, while they're answering questions, the, the network failure is is absolute and complete. Meanwhile, they've been on, on, on screen all day, which is just a little uh, too convenient for our liking. But there are ministers um, such as the ex-minister of defence, who was rather famous for not answering questions. Uh, we have... Uh, Lindy Wessisulu, Minister Lindy Wessisulu at the time, who was famous for giving one or two uh, word answers. Lynn Brown famously gave the answer no, which um, unraveled the whole state capture bundle in one, in one foul swoop. But what it is, is and what, why it's so important, is that we have to hold the executive to account. The executive don't hold parliament to account. And the only way we can hold them to account is via questions and via oral questions. Now, you can imagine oral questions are a little bit more difficult because you ask them a basic question, and then you have the opportunity to then ask them questions that relate to the answers that they give you. And they're a little more tricky. But imagine a written question. A minister has 19 days in which they can answer that question. They have researchers, they have staff, so they have absolutely no excuse not to answer those questions. But it just shows an absolute contempt for the democratic process. So the Democratic Alliance has been complaining about this for a while. Mm. And uh, it's been a problem for a while that these questions remain unanswered. And uh, we've decided to firmly put our foot down. And uh, the Rules Committee agreed with us. Uh, ministers have an obligation to give the South African Republic um, true reflections and true answers to the questions that are asked. And if they don't answer, uh, we've, we strongly feel that uh, a monetary amount should be fined to them for not answering per question and per day that they're overdue answering their questions. Yeah, so when you're calling for this uh, docking of their salaries, um, have you guys established an amount or has they come to a proposal of what amount or how much should be docked from their salaries? I will be putting in a proposal from the Democratic Alliance side, which I think is fair. And I think it w the, the appropriate sanction should be 1,000 rand per question and 1,000 rand per day that the question isn't answered. So if you, if you haven't answered one question and you're one day over, it will cost you 2,000 rand of your salary. Because let's be honest, ministers uh, earn a lot of money and a very integral part of the work that they do is answering questions, uh, not only so that we can hold them to account, but that South Africa gets the, the answers to the questions that they need. So yeah. it's, it's, um, it's a radical measure. But I think that we have to stop, uh, you know, stepping on eggshells. And I think we need to be radical. And I think we need to show these ministers that we mean business. Mm. But then would the radicalism actually pay fruit, Natasha? And this is considering the state of, of, of the National Assembly, right? We've got the, the African National uh, Congress, which enjoys a majority. The ministers that we, you were mentioning now belong to the African National Congress. So will the ANC agree to dock the salaries of the ANC members? I personally, and what I've picked up is certainly the members of the of the rules committee of the ANC are are very concerned with getting the decorum and getting the quality of parliament back up to a certain standard, which we've lost dramatically. 
And the the presiding officers are also, I mean, it's terribly embarrassing if you're a presiding officer and you call for a minister and the minister isn't in the house and they haven't given a leave of absence. And, you know, these are, these are things that just simply shouldn't happen. And I think that the ruling, well, I don't like to say ruling, the governing party is looking for a way out that they themselves can't propose. Um, so we've done it for them and we'll be the bad guy. But I think that it's, it's necessary to take this yeah. kind of radical step. But I'm also, I mean, I wasn't born yesterday and this isn't my first rodeo. I'm open to negotiations. But what I do know for sure is that in politics, the way you really hurt someone is in their pocket. Yeah, but then you mean you speak about how you have made the proposal for them. This is not the first time the Democratic Alliance makes proposals uh, for on, well, on behalf of the African National Congress in inverted commas. And what would be the rebuttal of the ANC is we cannot let the DA be the decision makers of how ANC matters are handled. You know this time and time again, Natasha, you've experienced this kind of uh, uh, sentiments being shared by members of the ANC. So in this case now, if it does not work, if the ANC says, nope, we will not allow even our members to lose a salary pay simply because they refuse to answer questions in Parliament, what next? Well, Faith, I don't think the ANC can say no this time because Judge Zondo himself in the Zondo Commission has said that Parliament failed in its duty of holding the executive to oversight. And in the Rules Committee, we don't speak as the ANC and as the DA and as different parties. We speak as Parliament. And we give suggestions not to other political parties. We give suggestions to Parliament. And we broadly, we work in the Rules Committee. Uh, we have a, a Rules Subcommittee that sits too. And what we do is we work in a way in which we try to find one another. And I think in this particular instance, we know that this is a problem. We know that we are being, you know, we're in contempt of the Constitution. We have heard and, and we heed the warnings of Judge Zondo. Mm. And I think this time it's going to be a case of if the ANC say no, they're going to have some serious um, explaining to do to Judge Zondo why they're willing to allow yet again uh, Parliament to shirk its responsibility of oversight. Yeah. And what does the timeline look like for this process, Natasha? Well, we've put we, we've said that we'll work on the document and that we'll we'll work together to see how we take these these particular proposals forward. Um, we always what we do is we give option A, B, and C. Like I said, it's it's all about negotiating. So I will give three different options: uh, a radical one, a less radical one, and and you know an even less radical one, but still one that affects the pocket. Um, and I, as soon as the rules committee sits, which is normally every two weeks, so we'll either sit this coming Friday. Friday or the, the Friday thereafter, uh, we'll accept or, or find it desirable or not desirable, and we'll take it to Parliament, and uh, Parliament will vote on it. But once the Rules Committee uh, decides amongst themselves, the ANC has the majority in the Rules Committee, and it's pretty much a done deal. Now, you must remember that this is for the ministers only, and I, I think it affects the ANC tremendously, too, when their ministers don't answer questions, and it embarrasses them, too. And I certainly think that the leader of government business... Uh, uh, Mr. David Mabuza, and the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, they come and answer questions and they have to face the music in parliament. And I think they'd want to see their ministers doing the same thing. We'll leave it there. DA Chief Whip, uh, Natasha Mazzoni, they're speaking to us around uh, these new rules uh, uh, proposed for parliament. Well, it